What's up everyone, it's your boy Norn Rad 89 here bringing you another video. And for today's video, we are gonna be on to the seventh installment in the Puppet Master franchise. That means we're going to be talking about this bad boy right here, Retro Puppet Master. And I actually have quite a soft spot in my heart for this film. I've returned to this one a lot as a kid, but it's been about like 10 years or so since I've seen it. So now you're gonna get kind of my full grown adult kind of opinions on this film as we talk about the positives, the negatives, and then the rating. And then I'm gonna send you all home. But before we even get down to that, tomorrow, yes, tomorrow, I will be on mic from DigiZ, that's live channel, that's Thursday, and he's doing a big live stream. So make sure you go check that out. There's gonna be a bunch of special guests. Come over, shoot us some questions, and we'll be happy to answer them. So now let's get down to this video. Roll it. So as I said in my intro, Retro Puppet Master is one I actually have quite a fond soft spot for this film. This is the seventh installment in the franchise, and this is the third film directed by David Dakota. He's a re reoccurring director. You're going to see return a lot in this franchise and stuff. And this is actually, in terms of timeline-wise, the film that takes place first. So this is a prequel film. So out of all the seven films that we've watched so far up to this point, this is the one that takes place first. So today we're going to talk about positives, the negatives, and all that kind of stuff. And let's get right into the positives right away is that this film has a very low budget kind of hallmark, wholesome type vibe. And I mean that in the best way. Like this is a film that they knew what their budget was. They knew what the low, like how it was going to be. And they didn't try to do anything extravagant or execute anything that they knew they wouldn't be able to do. So when it comes down to the Puppet Master franchise, sometimes some of the films, it looks like they wrote the script, they shot like 70% of the film and then they ran out of money and then they had to like crowdfund to finish the film. Like that's how it kind of feels. This film feels like they understood the budget before they went into the movie and started filming and then they executed what they were able to do for that amount of money. Another thing is that I think our lead actors do a fabulous job. I mean, young Toulon, we have an actor who plays a young Toulon, I believe his name is Greg Sestero. And then we have Isla is our female character, lead character, and them two have great chemistry on screen. And I think they do a good job and are actually good actors. So that lends a hand to this film being really cool. Also, I like, like I said, the puppets in this one, these new retro design looks. I like Dr. Death. We got Cyclops right there, Tumblr, Six Shooter, Blade down here, and Pinhead. And they have like, I mean, they're new looks, but these are supposed to be their retro old school designs. So I like that factor in it as well. And like I said, this has a really down to earth kind of Christmas Carol vibe, like wholesome, you know, vibe. I, I love that about it. And it's not as gruesome or as gory and the kills aren't off the charts like some of the other films. But this is kind of like a... I don't know how to describe it like one I would you would easily be able to show this one to like your kids you know what I mean kind of thing it's like not doesn't make it that scary or anything like that so that could be negatives for some people you know what I mean but instead like I actually had quite an enjoyable time returning returning to this film because I just remember all those fond times as a child watching this film. Also, the music in here still lands today, too, so I love that aspect of the film. You know what I mean? It has also a story that pulls you in, and what sucks, though, is it does have continuity issues, but I like the story. Is This is about young Toulon and him meeting Isla, which is the woman of his love, and this is before he has the secret to the puppets to do the serum and all that kind of stuff. So he ends up meeting a sorcerer named Avzel who's on the run from Sutex kind of minions. Like he sends out like these three minion guys to go after him because Avzel stole the secret to life. So all that's in this film as well. The only thing that sucks about that is like this leads us into our negatives is that continuity wise that messes up. Everything that we know about how Toulon got the formula, how, how it's executed, there's a different way that you turn them into the puppets in this one. And you can put people's spirits into the puppets. So there's a lot of aspects in this film that they bring up in terms of the lore, in terms of the franchise that is just messes up a lot of stuff continuity. Another glaring negative with this film is our main villains, the three Sutek like villain guys. Like I know it's very low budget and it's cheesy and you know their makeup you can tell it's very like just cheesy like kind of painted yellow faces with like these purple like kind of bruised looking designs on their face and stuff. 
they're able to do this telekinesis power where they could put you to sleep, but if they focus hard enough, they can kill you. And they end up killing young Toulon's, his friends. He has friends that are like his best buddies that actually help him work with the puppets and do a puppet show in, uh, this is World War, pre-World War I France. So his friends, they help him do this puppet show and all that stuff. Sutex minions come and they kill them. And that's how he ends up going for revenge on Toulon. But he's able to put his buddy's spirits like in these dolls. Has like a ring that does it and everything. Which is all new stuff that you've never been introduced to. Even the time when Toulon gets the formula. Every time we've been shown it before this film. It's at a different point in his life. So those are just some really huge glaring negatives. Like those are ones you really have to get over. And I could totally understand if that ruins this movie for you, especially if you're a diehard Puppet Master fan or even if you're new to the franchise and you're into the way it goes because through the first five films, there's actually a pretty stable continuity. You can figure out where all the films land and stuff timeline-wise. And then once you get into Curse and then Retro, these are the films where they kind of just throw all that shit out the window and they're just like, oh, let's make a Puppet Master film. And yeah, so it kind of throws you off a little bit when you watch it. It's a little bit jarring. But still, I have fun with this film. The retro puppets. I like the young actors and stuff. And like I said, this one, it's kind of an outlier the way it feels. Like I said, it's not as gruesome or not as bl brutal as some of the other ones. Or like, there's no nudity or nothing like that. You know what I mean? So you're going to miss out on some things that they usually typically do in the Puppet Master franchise. But I still think this one, like I said, especially after Curse... It's such a welcome return to like some kind of formula because freaking Curse of Puppet Master is just so bad, god awful. And this one, it's a lot better when it comes down to it because, you know, especially when you have a sour taste in your mouth like that and you're binging a franchise, a new, another film that just goes back to certain basics and does certain things right, it just feels so warm in your heart because it's like, damn, we had to survive that and now we made it on to this film. But still, as an adult now, i got to be honest with y'all, Retro Puppet Master, it's going to get a 6 out of 10. And the main reason it gets a 6 out of 10 for me is because I have some huge nostalgia love for this. And I've returned to this one a lot as a child, so I have very fond memories of it. But still, those glaring negatives really do stick out, especially when you're binging this franchise and you're going through it. The storyline is going to kind of throw you off and you're like, okay, what the... What? Like, you know what I mean? Like, you're like, huh? Um, but like I said, they still executed their low budget to perfection, I think, in this film compared to other films we're going to talk about, too, later on and stuff. But thanks for sticking around with me all for this review of Retro Puppet Master. Be sure to like and subscribe because we're going to be continuing this journey. And also, as I said in my intro, be sure to swing over to Mike from Did You See That, his live stream tomorrow it's going to be starting i believe it's 1 55 p.m my time that's mountain standard time but i'll be on there from about three to four and every hour he has new guests and stuff like that so like i said come over swing over there drop us some questions and we'll be happy to answer it but most importantly i want y'all to have a safe and happy day peace out